You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 35. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset, tools, and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go! Hey there, welcome back to the podcast. I hope you are enjoying the summer and maybe going on some fun dates. Today I want to talk about intro and extroversion in dating because it's something I have noticed some people think can be a challenge. Do you think you are too introverted for dating or that it's difficult to date as an introvert? Or maybe you think the opposite, that it's difficult to connect with someone on a deeper level If you're very extroverted and you feel more comfortable with a more light and chatty way of communicating. I got the idea to make this episode because at some point I had a client who felt she was too introverted and that she should try to work on that in order to become a good match for someone. And at the same time, I had another client who felt her extroverted personality was getting in the way of dating. And this really shows that it's not a question of being one or the other. It's how you choose to think about where you are on the intro and extroversion scale. So in this episode, I'm going to say a few words about what I see are the advantages and the potential challenges for respectively intro and extroverted women in dating. And I'm going to give you a few mindset tips to help you access the energy that serves you best around this question. And I might as well admit, it's going to be more about introversion than extroversion, simply because I am an introvert myself, and this is what I know most about. And I also have the feeling that more introverts think it's a problem to be introverted than extroverts think it's a problem to be extroverted. And so I want to just say this very loud and clear. If someone, including yourself, think it's a problem that you are introvert, is because they didn't really understand what it is to be introverted and the qualities of the introverted personality. They don't know that introverts are people who think before they speak, who are excellent at listening and who like to connect in smaller groups rather than mingle in a big event with hundreds of people. They might think that introverts are antisocial or have social anxiety and problems communicating and that is not true. So don't buy into any negative narratives about being introverted. It's a personality trait that has its own beautiful qualities and it's just as valuable and has just as much connection potential as being extroverted. It's just two different kinds of nature. None is better or worse than the other. And before we dive into what it really means to be intro or extroverted, let's just get this one thing straight. Intro and extroversion is one of the few personality traits that are indeed backed by science. It is not a fancy idea or a thought, and it's usually not something that changes overnight. It's the way your nervous system is wired. It's your level of sensitivity to stimuli, to say it very simple. There is a test that has been used to distinguish between intro and extroverted personality, and that can illustrate this difference. When you give a person a few drops of lemon juice on their tongue, they will respond by producing saliva. That's a normal physiological reaction. And the point is here that as introverted respond more intensely to stimuli, they will produce more saliva to the same amount of lemon juice. I know it doesn't sound very charming to think that you can recognize introverts as the ones who produce the most saliva, but hey, I am an introvert myself, And I think this test is actually very illustrative. Of course, this is not the usual way of testing. Normally, you would take a personality test in which you answer different questions to find out where you are on the scale of intro and extroversion. So what does it then look like to be sensitive to stimuli? Some signs that you are more introverted than extroverted could be 
Although you enjoy the company of other people, you prefer smaller groups and you can feel drained energetically from spending a lot of time in big groups of people. You need to recharge your batteries and that is best done by quiet time alone. You like your own company so you can easily make time pass on your own and you have a rich inner life. You also have a need to have time to just think and sort out your thoughts in order to thrive. You like smaller social settings and you are a good listener. You typically listen more than you talk and you like to ask deep questions. And also, you don't usually find silence awkward. You actually need silence from time to time. On the other side, you don't enjoy small talk. And although you're a good listener, you do not enjoy when people take advantage of that and talk nonstop. When you are more on the extroverted side, you like the energy of social mingling. You are very outgoing and you feel invigorated by chatting with a lot of people. You are like a fish in the water when you're networking and connecting with new people and you're very good at having conversations with people you've never met before. You need a minimum of social stimulation to feel good. Alone time doesn't charge your energy. So most people are a bit of both. We are talking about a scale here. And I can also share with you that as an introvert myself, I have learned to develop access to extroverted energy when needed and for a limited time. I've actually in the past practiced learning small talk by observing other people and check out how they do, simply because I could see it was a practical skill to have, but it didn't come natural to me. I can do these things when I need it, but I also know I have a limit. I need to withdraw at a certain point and allow myself some time to just sit in my brain, as I call it, just reflect and sort out my thoughts. So in the past, like many years ago, I was like, I think a lot of introverts are. I felt it was a problem to be introverted. I wanted to change that and I wished I was more outgoing and found it easier to chat with strangers. And just for the record, introversion is not the same as social anxiety. You can be completely non-anxious and still feel drained by social activities. And you can be extroverted and socially anxious. Those are not necessarily related. Anyways, I judged my introversion a lot and I tried to fix it and get out of the shell, so to speak. But as I learned more and more about what it is to be introverted and what qualities come with it, I started to not only accept it, but also embrace it more. And the big shift came for me when I read the book Quiet with the subtitle The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. That is one book that changed my life and how I saw myself as an introvert and actually really made me appreciate being introverted. So this is the book I would have wished I had written. And by the way, that's a great question to ask on a date. What is a book you wish you had written? That can show you if he even reads and what kind of literature he values and why. So keep that question in mind. Anyways, if you are an introvert, I cannot recommend this book enough. And I am not affiliated, just for the record. Susan Cain explains both the science, biology, history and cultural aspects of intro and extroversion and gives lots of examples of famous introverted people who changed the world. It basically has everything you need to know about introversion. So what are then the advantages of being respectively intro and extroverted when it comes to dating? Well, the upsides of being extroverted are quite obvious. You are more comfortable meeting new people, mingling when you go out, talking to a lot of people that you don't know, and you feel energized by that and find it easy to start a conversation with a stranger. So if you're at a social event, you don't worry that it's going to feel awkward and you naturally connect with a lot of people. So that's very good in terms of dating. The upsides of being introverted on the other side is that you are a great listener and you find it natural to enter a deep conversation and ask a lot of questions. You are also not necessarily uncomfortable if there's a moment of silence. And for a one-to-one -one setting, introverts are really good. This is where we are fish in the water and feel comfortable opening up. But are you more present as an introvert? I wouldn't say that's necessarily the case because you can also be deep in your mind as well when you're an introvert. But of course, when you are in listener mode, you have to be present. In terms of leaning into feminine energy, 
introverts might find that it comes easier in some areas. Listening, being present and not busy expressing yourself all the time is a more feminine energy. But the extroverted woman has the advantage of coming across as more open and warm and welcoming when chatting with a lot of people and mingling. And that's also a feminine energy. So I would say that both have equally good advantages in different ways. Then what are the downsides and how can you work on changing that? For introverts, I would say the first thing is to pay attention to your energy when you are out on a social event, for instance. This is where I had to do some work myself. When there were too many people, I would just naturally shut down and stay inside my head and most likely come across as very unapproachable. I had to remind myself to relax and smile and look around and make eye contact with people even if I didn't necessarily want to talk to all of them. Then I also found that for these kind of events where you meet a lot of people, it can be useful to have a minimum of small talk skills. Prepare a few questions or topics to talk about. That can make the mingling event so much easier for you. But when it comes to dating and when someone invites you out, you are of course in your favorite small setting. But here you could have an issue if the guy is talking non-stop. I often hear from my introverted clients, and this is also something I have noticed myself, that they experience that the moment someone finds out they're a good listener and ask a good question, then people assume that they like to listen to the whole life story, which they don't. And here it's important to have a few strategies to shift the conversation to a different direction or share something about yourself or just set a boundary so you don't end up feeling drained. For extroverts, whenever there's a downside to that, what I hear is that some can find it difficult to transition from the very lighthearted, chatty energy into a more deep conversation. So at some point, they want to have a more meaningful conversation, but they can feel trapped in the surface. And here you want to prepare a few questions that can open to a deeper conversation. So if this is something you struggle with, you can listen to episode 33 on how to create a deep connection by using specific questions. Find a few questions that you like asking, something that's interesting for yourself to talk about as well. Also, if you're very talkative, you might want to practice listening a bit more. Remember, you are on a date to figure out who he is, and you don't want to miss out on important information because you were busy with what to say next, so you forgot to listen. But all in all, we're talking small adjustments that only serve to make the process easier for you, not to change who you are. You should never do that. I want you to embrace who you are because it will also show up later in the process. You can't force yourself into being more extroverted, for instance, without this becoming obvious later on. And ideally, you should be with someone with whom you can feel comfortable being yourself, whether that is introverted or extroverted. Someone who sees the qualities in that, and they don't necessarily have to be the same. You can be an introverted person in a relationship with an extroverted partner. That is completely normal and can work really well. So I hope this was useful and you do not have to feel there's something wrong with your intro or extroversion. You just have to fight your superpower and see the areas where you can benefit from a few simple shifts so it doesn't block you but actually works for you. And isn't it great how we all are different? Wouldn't it be super boring otherwise? So I want to thank you for listening and wish you a beautiful week. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it. 